Hey guys, this is Steve from A Senior Moment. A while back, I promised you some video on building book nooks. So I've been hard at work building them and I'm ready to show you what I've been doing. They're designed to be Christmas presents uh, for this year. And what I did was I went to my nieces and my nephew and asked them what exactly was their favorite books. And the response I got was Winnie the Pooh, Peter Pan, and Tom Sawyer. So I started scouring the internet looking for things that would inspire me on those three books. And what I settled upon was the story in which Winnie the Pooh gets stuck in Rabbit's Hole. And um, I just thought that was just a hilarious um, story there. And I wanted to bring that to life. And then I have um, Peter Pan. Uh, and for the, the part of the book in that, uh, actually, I'd never read the book. So I went, you know, and I, I, I kind of remember the movie, but I went to the ride, the Disneyland ride. It's almost everybody's favorite ride at Disneyland. Um, and uh, the lines for it are always incredibly long. But there's that one iconic scene in which you are flying over London. And that's an incredible scene. And I wanted to bring that to life. And then with... Tom Sawyer, I went with the cave scene, um, mostly because everybody does the, the painting the, the uh, fence. Um, I wanted something more masculine. It was for my nephew. And so I decided on Tom Sawyer and Becky Thatcher lost in the caves. So I wanted to bring these to life. How was I going to do it? Well, first thing is I needed characters. I can't find any characters for sale. Of course not. No, nobody does this really. So I realized I was going to have to sculpt them myself. And I chose polymer clay, clay mostly because once, once it is uh, baked, it is hard like a rock. And then um, it, is, uh, it, it is kind of machinable. It's paintable. It, uh, it doesn't shrink when it's baked so uh, you know your dimensions so that that's that's the direction I decided to go uh, what I decided to do was sculpt all my characters first before I even started with a box I was going to sculpt my characters Winnie the Pooh was going to be the easiest one to sculpt I figured if I could nail Winnie the Pooh then at least I, I, I got a starting point and uh, so I did, I sculpted Winnie the Pooh. I was happy with the results there. And so then I decided to do the hardest sculpture of all. And that is right there, right there, those characters. So it's three characters, but if you notice, they're all interconnected. So they're really one character, really, because you don't want them to be independent of each other. So when I sculpted them, I had to start with a, a framework of all three of them connected. And then I, I put my clay around the framework and, and sculpted the, uh, the three characters together. Um, that was the hardest one. I figured I nailed the easiest one. I nailed the hardest one. Anything in between is going to be cake. So that's what I did. And... Um, and I, th I think I did pretty well. I'm particularly ha uh, proud of my Peter Pan, Wendy, and I'm not quite sure. I think that's Michael um, characters. So then it was on to uh, the actual building of the boxes. So let's start out with Winnie the Pooh. Like I said, I wanted some guidance as to what to do and I like this rabbit hole sequence but I didn't want to do just the rabbit's hole I like this half in half out look and so I really wanted to go kind of there but I wanted that hundred acre wood on the outside too this is one of the reasons why the box turned out to be so large once I realized that I could sculpt and I did pretty well at it I decided to go for rabbit's hole. I used this fine wire mesh supported by a thicker, heavier wire. And I actually inserted Winnie right into the wire. Remember, it's polymer clay, doesn't shrink when it's cooked. I simply layered the polymer clay on over it and then uh, 
when I was done, I baked it. This is how it looked when it was done, and I really liked the look of it. It really looked pretty organic to me. So after Rabbit's Hole was done and painted, I then started decorating it. I used uh, railroad modeling uh, sand for the pathway and the um, it's like a little spongy material that they use to create bushes and treetops and grass. Um, also, I found some small uh, rock that uh, could go on there as well to add to the illusion of the 100 acre wood. Um, I sculpted rabbit. You can see rabbit in there. I didn't get any uh, pictures of me actually sculpting him, which I was bummed about. And then the little honey jar I also put in there. I also sculpted a small, and you'll see this later on, a small little lantern that will go inside. I didn't want to put that in yet because the lantern actually has a flickering light in it and I needed to wire it. And until I knew how everything was going to go together, I did not want to commit myself to a particular location for that lamp. In the background there, you see uh, the bridge. The bridge is, uh, it was not sculpted by me. It's from Hobby Lobby. I just thought it would look awesome in the 100 acre wood. And it gave me this excuse to make this river. The river I made out of a two part epoxy resin. <clears throat> and I just colored it with a little bit of blue food coloring, uh, blue, blue and green until I got exactly the, the the uh, look that I wanted. Uh, I bubbled up a little bit as long as I could push those uh, bubbles over to the edges with a heat gun. I was happy to keep them in there. It made the water look alive. And uh, so that's my base. So the next step was getting the perspective correct. So I drew on the back wall the piglet's tree and, to see how it should look. And then I sculpted right onto my drawing uh, exactly. And I really, really like how this tree ended up turning out. First off, it's got this wonderful little door at the bottom that I, I thought I did pretty well on. I also, uh, there's a window about halfway up the tree that had a little shutter on it. I, I, got, I got that in there and then the uh, balcony, which was particularly difficult to, to sculpt. I compared it to the part that I had already finished. I thought the scale looked perfect. Uh, now it was time to start painting it. And I also added that little uh, sign that you can see there. So I got it painted up. I really liked it. I also added some of the detailing that I did in the foreground put on the leaves uh, that really added to it. Now here it is with the sides added in. I just went with um, kind of a generic painting on the sides. Didn't want to do anything uh, uh, too extensive there because it's not the focal point. But it really does look like you're now in the 100 acre wood. And there's my lamp. I got my lamp installed. And um, so now time to wire it up for lights. Here's the completed box. It looks great. I decorated the outside because I ran a lot of wires on the outside, but I really like the sayings that I picked out for it. Inside, it looks perfect. I am really happy how this one turned out. So now let's go take a look at Peter Pan and see what I did there. Like I said, I really liked the ride at Disneyland. I liked the idea of looking at the dormer as they're flying out of it. The overlooking London was particularly attractive to me. Um, I did sculpt the three characters, but after some thought, I did finally decide to sculpt the little baby as well and put that one in. My original idea for the rooftop was two dormer windows. I made a paper mock-up. Compared it to my characters, realized I was going to need way too large of a box for that. Cut it down to just one dormer window. I took my paper apart and then laid it across some plastic, traced it all out, and then cut that all up. Put it together using some E6000 glue and some blue pa painter's tape. 
and then started uh, using foam, uh, craft foam, to make the details and then painted all that up and make it look like my rooftop. Looks pretty good. It looks a little bit better later on when I add detail. I really wanted to add that layered depth to the rooftops. So I made a second rooftop that would sit be kind of behind the first main one, a little shorter than. And I made this one, it did not need to have the window and or lights inside of it. So I just made this out of a solid piece of styrofoam and then laid my craft foam on over it and then painted that in place. The railing across the top there is a cut piece of railing uh, off of a fence uh, that I bought from model, model railroading fence that I bought online. <clears throat> Later on, I'm going to sculpt the chimney for that out of uh, the polymer clay. As I had said before, I wanted to make it look like they were flying out of the window. However, I was not very good at sculpting faces when I first started with the polymer clay. I'm still not that great. And my faces on these three characters don't look very good at all. Now you can see the little boy. He's one of the last uh, characters that I sculpted. And my face sculpting abilities got a little better. But for them, the faces aren't all that good, so I didn't want them to show. So I had to angle it so that you couldn't really see the faces very well. And this is what I came up with. I mounted them on these little wooden dowels that I painted brown. And my the idea behind that is that I was going to put a treetop underneath them. And the dowels would simply look like branches from the treetops if they're seen at all. And uh, I think that Overall, you'll see that the effect worked really well. Okay, a couple things in this photo. I forgot to mention that I added the chimneys onto the houses from the last picture. Those are also sculpted out of polymer clay. I was really happy how they looked and they really added to it. Also, you can see in the background, I took a piece of foam and I cut it into a city uh, cityscape and uh, then painted it and you can see it kind of has like a blue wash across it that is actually a uv reactive paint so that'll uh, help it to glow later on now what i really wanted to point out in this picture is the tree that i added uh, in the foreground there to hide those sticks and i was really proud of myself and how i did this I, again, I used the same stuff with Winnie the Pooh that I used for like little bushes or a little, yeah, little uh, weeds. I used this instead as leaves on a tree. <clears throat> the branches of the tree are actually a piece of wire that I wrapped up with masking tape. And then I took hot glue and I ran it up and down the masking tape to make that, that tree lo looking, that bark looking uh, effect on the trees and then painted them. Once I put that down in place and hot glued it down in place, then I started putting on all the leaves and it hid those dowels very nicely and it does look like they are just gliding over the treetops. Now for the back wall, I painted the London City uh, as you see it in the concept art above. I made it a little different simply because of the constraints of my box, but um, I think it looked pretty good. My plan was to put in little tufts of cotton to make it look like that fog enveloping the city. Uh, ultimately decided against it. Didn't really think I needed it. Um, I used UV uh, paints for the stars and the lights of the city so that that would come to life uh, with, a, with a black light. And then I have Big Ben there uh, made out of polymer clay. And for I cut out the little clock faces and put uh, some plastic behind there and then tried my hardest to paint little a little clock face inside and it was very difficult so ended up not looking as good as I would have liked and I also put a little LED back there 
so that it glows when the lights are on in it. Okay, so this is with the back wall in place and the two side walls. On the right side wall, I continued on with that cityscape to uh, give it a little bit of depth on that side. On the left side, I continued on with like a painting of the the rooftop. I really didn't know how I was going to do that. This is what I settled on. I think it looks good. I wish I was a better painter. I could have made it look even cooler, but um, it's not a focal point, so I'm not too worried about it. The Big Ben looks absolutely perfect uh, back there, and um, <clears throat> the starry sky is, is pretty impressive. Over here, I want to look at this. this. This is what I think is really cool. This little tiny wire has the smallest, tiniest little LED right on the tip of it. And it's a green flickering LED. And that is going to be Tinkerbell. Almost done now. I got all the wiring done. You can see Tinkerbell lit up on the right hand side. The black lights in the very back are just lighting up those stars and the streets. Uh, really nicely and overhead you can see a big gigantic moon probably a little bigger than I really wanted it to be but I thought it was really cool I needed something to give some ambient light into the box uh, of, of a full moon <clears throat> otherwise it was just too dark and I found this Christmas ornament that I decided to cut in half and put a LED inside and make it make it a moon so it looks really good. So now it's time to show you the completed box. So like the other one, I hid a lot of my wiring on the outside with paper. Uh, and with this one, I also wanted to do something with the corners. So I put a little rope on there, make, give it a nautical look. You got the Lost Boys on the sides. You got Captain Hook and his crew on the very top there. And then inside you see it just comes to life. Tinkerbell's uh, twinkling and there's a candle light, uh, lighting inside the house there. The uh, Peter and the gang are flying away and there's a little boy up there on the rooftop. And just really, really happy about how this all ended up looking. So there you go, guys. Uh, there's the first two book nooks. I am now working on Tom Sawyer, super excited about it because it's going to be really, really cool. And I'm just hoping I can get video that will even capture how cool this really does look. That's coming soon, so stay tuned.